guys, Miss Kulkarni here. So, I guess you are ready to learn some more things about taxa. And in this video, we will talk about semi-synthetic methods by which taxol is produced. As you know, in the previous video, I already discussed the problems with the natural product extraction of taxol. But before we continue, here is a quick snapshot. The main environmental impacts of the extraction process are the Pacific yew tree, which is the source of taxol that can become extinct. And then we of course will have no more resources. We also use tons of organic solvents and that poses the hazardous conditions. And other thing is the yield is extremely low and that's why it is not economically a good process. So what do we use for this semi-synthetic method of uh, producing taxol? There is 10 d bactine. This compound which you see over here, that's a natural precursor of taxol and it is found in European yew trees. So what is a big deal? This particular tree, this particular plant species can be cultivated easily, not like the Pacific yew tree which takes hundreds of years to grow. Second thing is when we extract this compound, the yield is 0.2% and you may think it's still low. Yes, it is low, but do you remember the yield for taxol was how much? It was 0.004%. So this is almost 50 times higher yield. So that's a positive news which we got. And the main important thing is we can see here the taxol backbone structure is exactly same. The only different thing which we got are couple of groups which, which we'll talk about in a while. But if the main backbone structure is still same, that helps us to make sure that we can keep the chirality stereochemistry same. So let's go back and find out a little bit more about the rings which are present in this d acetyl or the taxol precursor. And this structure resembles very closely with taxol. So there are four main rings. This is ring A. Then if you see here, this is the ring B ring C and this is a four member ring which is ring D. Each of the ring has been given name based upon number of carbon atoms and also depending upon the functional group properties which it has got. So ring A is called as cyclohexene. Why it is hexene? There is a double bond over here and that's why it is going to be an alkane and hexa stands for six carbon atoms. So now we know what is ring A called. Ring B, it may be a little difficult to visualize, but if you look carefully, remember these are parts of the ring. So it has got how many sides, how many carbon atoms? It has got eight. Eight stands for octa and it is cyclo. So it is cyclo octane ring. Then we got ring C, which is a six member ring. So it will be cyclohexane ring and the ring D is a special one. It's only four member and it has got oxygen. So it's called oxytine ring. So these four rings are critical for taxol backboard. Let's find out now how to number the carbon atoms in these rings. The beginning point, starting point is going to be that particular carbon over here. So that is one. And then we are going to go anti-clockwise around the entire ring structures. So next will be two, this will be three. Are you watching me? Four, that's five. This one with the hydroxyl group is seven. This will be eight. The one with the ketone group is nine here. That's 10, 11, 12, keep on going, 13, 14. What do we do? Now we go to the one which is inside. So inside the ring, that's what we have. 
and we are going to number that as 15. Then we got actually two methyl groups attached to that. One of them should be pointing inwards, other will be pointing outside. So the one which is going in the plane of the ring is 16. One which is protruding out is 17. Then what? Then we go around and find out the other structures which are outside the rings. This will be 18. This will be 19. And then we go back to the oxytine ring which is a special four member ring. And this one is number 20. So that's the skeleton of taxol and that's the numbering. Now look carefully, our compound says 10 and then it says deacetyl bacotine. So the main compound is bacotine and it says deacetyl at position 10. So over here, if we have the acetyl group that is removed, D stands for removing. And what we have is OH, that's what the compound is, the one without acetyl group in position 10. And guess what? This compound has an abbreviated nickname, which is 10 and it is DAB, D-A-B. So how did we get this nickname? 10 is as it is. There is D in deacetyl. Then there is A for acetyl and there is B for the parent name. So that becomes 10, D-A-B, 10 DAB. So let's focus now on the semi-synthesis of taxol from this 10 DAB. As I mentioned earlier, both 10 DAB and taxol have a core backbone structure. What is the main difference thing which you see between both of those? Over here at position 10, as you know, there is OH here and in taxol, there is that acetyl group. And look at this, at position 13, we have OH hydroxyl group here for 10 dab and in taxol, we get all this different substituent. So how do we achieve this, converting 10 dab to taxol? Obviously, there are multiple synthetic steps that follow from 10 dab. Some of the reactions will be simple condensation reactions and some will require some organometallic chemistry. So there is still some chemistry and some work which is involved in this conversion, but this is still much better process than extraction of taxol. And of course, there are more methods by which taxol can be produced. We'll talk about that in next video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.